Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Friday, September 3rd, 2021. Well, yesterday we had just kind of a topsy-turvy day as I kind of suggested that after those morning numbers, we could really see the market just kind of chop around. And that's really what ended up happening, although it was quite a um, rambunctious moves um, throughout the day um, with some, you know, big point moves as we chopped around, but it just really stayed in the same location here. So what does that mean for today? Well, we have some more big data this morning that's going to come out before the uh, market opens and everything could change very, very quickly. So how about we settle in, grab ourselves something to drink, and let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. As you can see, we have kind of an interesting, um, interesting chart here with lots of bullishness in these index charts and a little bit of uncertainty about an employment situation number coming out. So first, let's take a look at the technicals in these charts, see if that helps us gain any understanding about how we may want to approach the market for the day. Remember, I have been talking about this upside trend, and this upside trend continues to hold in a very bullish way. And as you can see, we're locked into kind of a range-bound area here. This is a productive consolidation at the moment because we're remaining, remaining bullish. And notice this morning, we're trying to pump up in the pre-market, suggesting there is no issue here, trying to pump it up. It's, it, it is interesting to note that uh, Chinese markets, or Asian markets, I should say, traded mixed overnight, um, substantially mixed. And European markets are just kind of on hold waiting to see what our data is going to be. But boy, not here, not here in the United States. We're putting on a brave face and we're trying to suggest these numbers are come, going to come in very strong. And so we're pumping up here, trying to break through levels here in the pre-market pump. But let's also keep in mind that we have a little price resistance right through this chart. And if that number comes in strong, we could certainly break out here and we are within striking distance of new record highs in the Dow if that number comes in good. If it happens to come in not so shiny, then we could certainly see those bears reemerge. And if they would reemerge, I don't think there's going to be any problem unless we break that the low of that dark candle right there. If we break down below that, and that would be a painful move, that would be a big point move in the market. Um, as long as we hold above that level, I think we're in pretty good shape here on the the Dow. Technically, you know, looking at our moving averages, everything is copacetic here. Um, bulls are solidly in control. And if there's any chance that the number is even a little bit shaky, it's possible the market will ignore that um heading into this long weekend so just watch that closely now let's take a look at the spy 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 extremely bullish now there is a little danger here and the danger that we see here in this chart is just from the extension that we have um, moved in this really really bullish big tech press to the upside. Now, take a look how far away we are kind of stretched for, from some reasonable price support in the chart. Now, there is a little teeny tiny price support right through there that we could hold. But let's just keep in mind that if we were to pull back, um, this could be a rather painful pullback um, should we find some reason to stumble. If we don't stumble, we also have to consider the fact that this is a pretty substantial rally. And it is possible, even on good news, the sellers say, okay, that's it, um, and start pushing down heading into the weekend. 
I don't know what, you know, uh, we, we're just extended. So make sure you don't become complacent thinking that the market could never fall because the possibility of some profit taking could happen when we're this extended. Now, I don't think it becomes at all serious at, at all unless we were to break this low. If we break that low, then we start to have some major concerns here in the market. And that would be a pretty darn painful pullback if that were to occur all at one day but as long as we hold above this area right in here I think we're in good shape and if if we were to break that low then we do have additional support here in this chart that could pick that up and, and hang on so watch that close then if we take a look at the QQQ now the NASDAQ is also in a pretty darn extended situation notice we had a little tiny bit of consolidation here the last few days we're starting to run out of some of that steam um, to just buy anything at any price um, unfortunately we have kind of an uncomfortable situation here and that is that the pullback to support is pretty substantial um, if we were to um, remember these are very big up days um, in the QQQ a pullback in here could be pretty darn rough um, let's take a look if we go to the actual NASDAQ composite and measure um, from yesterday's close if we were to pull back to that support level if we pull back to the top of that support level 276 points if we were to pull back to the bottom of that support level where the stronger support is 392 points so just keep in mind that when we extend like this if we do find reason to stumble it could be a pretty darn painful pullback if that were to occur so just don't become complacent in here and we'll watch for these levels of price support to perhaps hold if we do get a disappointing number but please keep in mind those are really the only support levels that we have in this chart because the extension um, until we reach back down into here. So that could be some painful pullbacks if it were to occur. So watch that closely. And then let's take a look at our IWM. Now IWM has remained very strong after surging strongly here um, last week, this big surge up and you can see breaking back above that 50 day moving average. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing energy prices. Let's go to XLE. Energy prices are continuing to rally and there is some talk out there that oil could move as high as $80 a barrel this morning. No, well, not this morning, but rise up to $80 a barrel. Now, if we're gonna rise up and have those oil sector stocks pushing to the upside, then that could certainly help support IWM here. But I wanna kinda of remind everyone that although this is bullish at the moment, we have a lot of price resistance up here that we're gonna run into here very quickly in that chart. And that has rejected, well, since, um, you know, since early this year in February, that level has been Pretty darn important so let's watch that carefully um, as we approach those resistance levels it is possible that that oil sector could um, support that strong enough that we can push on through but I would expect some challenges up there let's take a look at our VIX now our VIX yesterday um, interestingly enough we had a little bit of back and forth um, you know we set new record highs again and it seems to be a daily occurrence anymore um, setting new record highs but it's interesting that we still have not dropped to a new low in the vix now we're still holding in here fine there's no major fear here but i do wonder if there's a little bit of complacency um, really building into uh, this market and seeing that vix holding up just a little tiny bit not not trying to break to new lows um, does concern me a little bit. However, today, if we get a really good number in that employment situation, it is certainly possible that that could be the catalyst to drive us down and break that support. So bulls are in control. There's nothing here showing any fear, but it may be showing just a little bit of complacency in the market. Let's take a look at our T21. 
22. T21-22 is the four week new high new low ratio. And as you guys know, T21-22 doesn't tell us the direction of the market. It just tells us where those pressure points are that we have here in the market. So keep in mind that we are already stretched up here in this bearish reversal zone. This is where we kind of reach that overbought condition. And I don't think there's too much argument out there that the SPY and QQQ could be in a bit of an overbought situation. However, what this does tell us is we still have a, some upside opportunity. If we get a nice and strong bullish number, there'd be no reason to believe that we can't push clear up here to the top. We've done that before where we've peaked out here. Um, we'll peak right up there at the top. So if we get a nice strong number, we certainly could get that to peak right on up there and, and um, hit that um, extreme area in the T2122. Um, but the, let's also kind of keep in mind that at the same time, if we were to find a, a reason to stumble, notice our T2122 yesterday shot, we were back up here. At one point in time, we we pushed above that blue line and then we just kind of faltered here a little bit and got a little soft heading into today. So we do have that opportunity um, set up in here that if we do stumble in some way that um, we have a big downside opportunity here in that chart that could ensue. So watch that carefully for that and just make sure you're prepared. Let's take a look at our T21. Now T2107 is starting to show some bullishness here in the sense that we're breaking this downtrend. Notice that downtrend here. These are the percentage of stocks above their 200 day moving average. So notice we have had a pretty substantial improvement here on this recent rally in the market, pushing a bunch of those stocks back above their 200 day. And notice we've got a little price support right in here. We're breaking that downtrend, holding that in there. So if we can maintain this bullishness, we have had that situation where those, the big techs have been able to lift and push these stocks back above their, or pull them back above their 200 day moving average. And as long as that can continue, that's going to help support the market. We need to see those um, stocks that have been kind of oversold lifting back up a little bit. So watch that closely. If that can continue, that would be a bullish sign for the market. And then our T2101, the absolute market breadth. Breadth has been increasing, and that is a good sign on a bullish wave like this, seeing that breadth come up. Now, we'll want to watch that carefully. Remember, we've kind of been hitting some downtrend resistance in that chart, and we have respected that to this point. But if we can get a good solid number and that, see that breadth expand a little bit, we could do pretty well today. If it happens to shrink, that could be a problem. And there may be a, a reason that it would shrink, not because of a bad number, but it might shrink just because we're heading into a three-day weekend. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's take a look at our economic calendar here today. And of course, what I've been talking about all morning is this employment situation number. Um, employment situation, as you know, is a pretty big number. That's uh, one of those things that the Fed is going to be looking at. And there's a couple things to consider here. Um, that employment situation number is expected to come in pretty darn strong. Let me show you here on, this is the Econo Day calendar. You're going to find consensus, uh, different consensus um, around in different uh, calendars. But take a look here. Right now the consensus is expecting somewhat over 700,000 in the non-farm payrolls. And they're looking for um, notice right here, 693,000 in the private payrolls. Now we know that our ADP number came in far short of this number. And if this um, comes in anywhere near that, um, that could be a little bit of a problem for that private payrolls number. If it comes in around 374, that would be a big miss. Um, what the headline number everybody's going to be watching is this one right here. So there is some concern out there that um, pandemic and things like that um, have a, are having a negative effect. And let's kind of keep in mind, this is already expecting a decline from 943 to 740, a slowing. So 
if this were to miss, you could see how there could be that stumble in the market if that were to miss. And they're expecting the unemployment rate to slip from 5.4 to move down to 5.2%. Still remarkably elevated considering the position of our market right now. But um, we're going to have to watch this number closely. If it comes in strong, if it comes in anywhere close to these numbers, we're going to be in good shape. Now, there is also another thing out there to consider. Remember, the Fed is talking about tapering. If this number were to come in weak, if this comes in weak, that might give the Fed, the Fed um, committee members um, a little bit of cover to continue to print. Um, so it's going to be an interesting situation here. If this number comes in weak, we could actually see bullishness come back in because that would suggest the Fed is not going to taper. We're just going to keep printing money. So watch that carefully. There's a lot of dynamics here that could play out this morning on this number. Also keep in mind that we have ISM services here today. I doubt it will be as heavily um, um, worried about as what comes before the market open. And as a matter of fact, I want to suggest that after we get through the reaction of this employment situation report this morning, we get through all that turmoil in that morning session, don't be at all surprised, guys, if volumes just drop like a rock. As a matter of fact, if the number comes in good, holds up, Look for a little bit of bullishness in the market and then look for that bullishness to just kind of die on the vine. Watch for those volumes to drop and everybody's probably going to be shutting off their computers early and heading out for the long weekend. However, if that number were to come in bearish, that could keep traders engaged a little bit longer with um, some push back or some push down into that three day weekend. So watch that closely if that were to occur. But just kind of keep in mind, traders aren't going to want to be heading out, taking advantage of that long weekend. And um, if things look pretty copacetic, that'll be a pretty good indication for them to bail early. So watch for that possibility as we slide into that weekend. Let's take a look at... Um, our earnings calendar. Now, our earnings calendar is kind of interesting today. Our earnings, we have 13 companies, 13 companies um, on the earnings calendar list, and all 13 are unconfirmed reports. However, one has just popped in here um, that has already reported, GB has reported this morning. So the major all of the majority of these are small caps, not a single one confirmed uh, today. So it is possible we don't see any activity um, on that earnings calendar at all. Um, so watch carefully, but I doubt we're going to have much activity around that today. So just keep that in mind. Um, so with that, everyone, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that, if you guys could do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that sub subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find these videos to be useful, helpful to you, then please do me a favor. Click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the, in the engagement of these videos. The algorithm shows these videos to more folks, the more people engage and the channel grows. So thank you to everyone who does take the time to do that. And just a huge shout out again to those folks that are supporting the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link. You'll find that just below the title of the video. I just want to say thank you to everyone. That is very, very kind of you, and I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. So let's go really quick. I'm running out of time here this morning. A couple of charts that you might want to be keeping a close eye on um, here in the market. If we take a look at some stocks coming up out of bottoms, some interesting stocks that you might want to pay attention to, take a look at TLRY. Now, TLRY, this is cannabis, and cannabis has been struggling like crazy here 
um, hasn't been doing well but notice we're starting to see this little bit of a flattening out and trying to break some trends to the upside so if you're looking for something coming up out of bottoms you might want to take a look at that um, some of these cannabis you can see it in um, crone you can see it in acb these stocks trying to perk up here just a little bit trying to move through some of those downtrends and hold some support so keep an eye on that these would be pickups off the bottom not exactly my favorite charts to trade but something you might want to pay attention to another place you might want to be looking is over in the real estate sector take a look at xlre oh my goodness um real estate really strong now this is a concern as well um when we start seeing um, big institutions and things like that supporting real estate what they're doing is they're looking for value what we could be seeing here guys is a little bit of rotation into safety and with um, real estate really pushing up here that gives me that little concern that we might be reaching that that point in the market where we're seeing institutions maybe um, move over into more of those safety value holding plays in the market so keep an eye on xlre and by the way you can find those stocks really easily in tc2000 just by clicking this one icon here and you can jump right into stocks that are supporting that and showing bullishness here in the market so watch that carefully we're seeing a lot of those real estate stocks real estate trusts really doing well here recently another place you might want to look is in utilities utilities you would not normally see uh, moving up like this in a market unless we have that rotation toward safety and we see that going on here right now in um, the utility sector xlu pushing up strongly so keep a close eye on that and once again if you click in here you'll see stocks like fe that is a beautiful breakout here in that chart moving up to the upside watch that close um, stocks like this could provide you some safety, could provide you some nice dividend yield in the charts. Other defensive sector stocks might be a place to be looking. Take a look at stocks like Coca-Cola. Coke has struggled here. Whoops, that went to a two-day chart. Coke here as um, an interesting chart in the fact that, let me go to my drawings here. We broke we broke down through this support in the chart, but notice that we've rallied back above and we're holding up here right now. We had a little bit of a test on this long-legged doji here, a little bit of a test. I wouldn't be all surprised to see this have to rest up here a little bit, but one of the patterns that I look for in the market is a stock that has broken support, recovers it, holds it as support, and I'm looking for that clue that we start an uptrend. So watch that carefully. PepsiCo holding in there strong. Take a look at stocks like Philip Morris. Oh my goodness, big strong moves here in Philip Morris. Um, again, big strong dividend payers um, doing well. That rotation into a little bit of safety. You guys know that I've been trading Altria and we're up huge. I'm up 30 some percent here on Altria since our entry on this line right here um, just a big upside move on these big dividend payers and consumer defensive stocks so you might want to start taking a look at some of those stocks taking a look at you know, like pepsico taking a look at um, hershey taking a look at anything that's in that defensive sector even walmart is holding up pretty well in that defensive sector um, so watch those closely. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. And probably more importantly, I want to wish you a safe and wonderful three-day weekend. Remember, Right Way Options is closed on Monday. I want to wish you all the very, very best. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here bright and early next Tuesday morning.